Greetings and salutations. I am Skojo in 360. Welcome to the third episode of the 360 community. The whole point in naming this show what it is, is that I want to have my video be the springboard for everyone sharing their joys, their pains, their hacks, their experiences. So just use this as an opportunity to comment below, ask questions. You know how to do it. And oh, and don't forget to hit subscribe, but I digress. Now I'm just gonna flat out tell you what the best cameras are below $1,000. Now I do need to put out a disclaimer. I'm a video editor slash producer. I'm not a gearhead. However, when I got into the 360 world, I became a bit more of a gearhead because I really wanted to educate myself on what the products were without there before I bought. I ended up buying the Insta360 ONE X, which is on my list that I'm about to tell you about. A lot of these cameras I don't personally have experience with. These are ones that I learned things from people like Ben Claremont, the 360 guy, 360 Rumors. These are all YouTube channels you can check out. They are much better at gear than I am. I'm gonna give you just sort of a breakdown so you can get started, but check out those other YouTube channels. I'll try to leave a description, if I'm not too lazy, down below. Let's face it, I'm pretty lazy. But let's get started. Let's talk about the best cameras under $1,000 and the best camera under $100? That's right, there's always gotta be one camera that gets you just started. I mean, it's not gonna be very good, but it's gonna be affordable, and there is nothing wrong with those kind of cameras. Now, the Samsung is one I actually do have a little bit of experience with. I believe I had experience with the one that really didn't work well with iPhone, and I have an iPhone, so that was kind of a painful experience. The thing about the gear is, it's actually uh, water resistant, shock resistant, which is pretty cool, and uh, it shoots 4K. I've seen the footage, it's okay, it's okay. But the best part about it is, you can generally get it for around $100. So this, if you're just wanting to get into the field to test it out, uh, this is the camera to get. Not gonna give you the best experience, nor give you the best idea of how to get into 360, but something to get you started. The one that I might look at a little bit more closely, because I looked at it closely before I bought my Insta360 ONE X, but if you really want to get into 360 and get into something that's not really just kind of a pain, is the Mi Sphere. Now this one comes in at around $200 now, and it's not a bad little camera. The resolution is decent, the build on it is pretty good, and it's actually water resistant to, I believe it's a meter, which I mean, my Insta360 ONE X sure ain't, and the Venture case isn't really helping much these days, so I like a camera that's got a good solid build. Personally, if it were me, I'd spend the extra 100 bucks, get the Mi Sphere, bypass the gear, 200 bucks, get it. Now, of course, I also have to argue that you might want to even spend a little bit more money, because all these cameras I'm talking about now are very, very limited and I like to at least have a few things to play with in my arsenal to really get an experience and to be able to judge what the 360 experience is gonna be like. So the first one that I would say makes the lower end of the, hey, this is pretty good, is the Theta V. Now the Theta V has been coming in at around, well, under $400 these days, 4K camera, great design. Um, I personally don't have uh, any personal right hands-on experience with it, but I know several people that have and they're very pleased with it. They like the cost, they like the design, they like the footage, so you might check out the Theta V. Only shoots 4K, and at $400, the problem is is that then the sort of leader in the 360 world right now, the Insta360 ONE X, which, doggone it. Oh, here it is. That's what I got. 399 shoots 5.7K. And uh, the, what I can say about this camera is that it's probably the one I would recommend the most. I would also recommend getting a large bottle of aspirin when you get it. There are a lot of problems with Insta360 ONE X. None of it is the footage. Um, it, this, there are some software issues. They still haven't gotten out a lot of the accessories. A lot of us that have gotten the camera and we're super excited feel a little bit of the honeymoon being over, shall we say. But, God, the footage is so good. The slow motion is butter and uh, on toast. And it's just a nice, great camera. Definitely, this would be the one I would recommend for most uses. Now, 
There are people like me that need durability and we're willing to pay extra for it. And if you're willing to do that, there is one you might take a look at called the Garmin Verb. The problem with the Garmin Verb is it's not cheap. Right now, actually, the retail price for it is around $700, which actually puts it under the price of many of the GoPro Fusions, which I'm going to talk about next. Uh, so the price is fairly high, and really the only thing you're getting for that price that can make it worth it is if you need durability. Uh, it's great for being underwater, for taking a good shock from falling over, and if it does fall over and the lenses get scratched, which is almost, it's gonna happen to you at some point. Most cameras, you can't remove the lenses. You gotta send it in to be repaired or replaced. This one, you unscrew the lenses, you get a new one. That is dynamite. And I also love the fact that you can take this out and really abuse it. In fact, it's kind of made for outdoors. You can use it to, uh, it will record stats like elevation and speed while you're recording. So it's kind of off in a class by its own. Would I get it? I looked at it, decided against it. Speaking of durable, of course, GoPro is always fairly durable, but in this camera, we've got two lenses once again sticking out either side of the camera, so durability is sort of up for debate. The GoPro Fusion was the one that out of the gate everyone was getting so excited about. It was around, oh, you know, six, seven hundred dollars. Now it's down closer to, believe it or not, I've seen it for around five hundred dollars because people have been figuring out that really the only reason to get it now is if you're really, 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 really into great looking footage, because that's what it is, and it's worth it for that. Problem is, it uses two SD cards, which is not that easy to deal with, and the workflow from what I hear, again, this is from people like Ben Claremont, the 360 guy, 360 rumors, the workflow is Horrible. So the only real reason to get it is if you are just obsessive about the best footage. But having experience with the 5.7K on the Insta360 ONE X, I do video production for a living. I think the footage looks great at a much cheaper price. And finally, at the thousand dollar mark is the new Theta Z1. This one actually has a an adjustable aperture, which I'm still wrapping my head around. Uh, I believe the last thing I saw was that it was 4K, but it has a one inch sensor, which puts it in a completely different class by itself. Is it a good idea to get this one for a thousand bucks? Based off of what I know, no. I don't have personal experience with it. Again, check out the other creators on YouTube, maybe for more in-depth reviews. But if you really want that extra sensor, that extra data richness, then take a look at the Theta Z one all right well again i'm not really a gearhead uh there are lots of other gearheads on the youtubes that you can check out uh but i did do a lot of research in getting into a camera under a thousand dollars before i bought mine i did end up buying the insta 360 one x i still highly recommend this one just be prepared for the headaches that come with it the form factor is amazing it's got a removable battery it's used 5.7k this the uh the slow motion is dynamite and so this is the one that gets my current recommendation. Insta360 ONE X, $400, maybe save yourself about another 100, 150 bucks for batteries and accessories, if you can get them. I'm Skojo in 360 this is the 360 community, so don't just watch my video, comment. What are your favorite cameras under $1,000? Lord knows I haven't covered them all. Give us detailed descriptions. Give us some idea about what cameras have been working for you, the problems, the joys, all that fun stuff. And let's keep this 360 community rolling on. Peace out, all. Love ya.